Meet the bottom line to write a song, perform a song, touch somebody, bring people together. So you enjoy coming to the shows? And oh, definitely, this? definitely. Music's our lifeblood. And uh, I, was, I was getting pretty uh, antsy before that. <laughs> amount of confusion. For the last 80 weeks, there have been an incredible bunch of people behind me that through persistence, dedication, communication, I don't know. I don't know if I'd go that far or not. <laughs> oh, and a lot of fun. We have put on an incredible shows for you each and every week. And you have let us know how proud you are of this and how much the musical community means to you because you have made it possible for us to raise, are y'all ready? $526,000. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> we, hit, we hit that. We, uh, <laughs> we hit that mark, and I am so happy. Guys, what a blast. What a blast. Yeah, where's yeah. where is everybody? Did they all make it? <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> all right. <laughs> so, uh, who's popping? Who's popping? Popping, popping? Oh, wait. we had enough of a pop there. Look, our music community has to continue and you're going to make that happen. Tonight, I am so excited. We've got incredible music, but better than that, Stu is back. Yeah. Somebody ate that trail of breadcrumbs that he left when he, you know, behind him when he took off. Popeye's biscuits and, uh, they were just too good. Somebody took them, and it took him a while to get back. But, did, but I am I'm so, so happy that you're here, here, baby. Thank you for having me back, and I'm so grateful for all the hard work everyone was doing while I was uh, wandering about this uh, fine country of ours. And I'm just so glad we get to come back, celebrate, and, and have these fantastic musicians coming in here. And, of course, so grateful to our sponsors over at Bobberg's Private Wealth for helping us through this, and the crew of Touch, keeping that carnival spirit alive no matter yes, what. Yes, indeed. And, uh, I'm excited. It's very, very easy for you to become part of that, of that, uh, that group of people that have helped us. You can text FUNK to 36413 or go to the website, thefunkyuncle.live. Check out the merchandise. Check out the, the Frenchie prints. You can bid on the prints. You can become a sponsor. There's all kind of ways to help. But what I really need you to do is to look up where we have our Jazz Fest shows. That's right. In two days, two days, we're going to start our Jazz Fest shows with a bang with Leo Nocentelli. And I'll read off all the other people that are playing with him later. It's impressive. It is very impressive. And that starts on Friday, October the 8th. Uh, we have Jason Neville on Saturday. I knew that. I knew that. On the next Thursday, on the 14th, we've got the Funky Uncle All-Stars. And that is so much fun. That one's a blast. Walter Wilbman Washington on the 15th. And we're closing out with Mark Mullins and Friends on the 16th. Yeah. Get your tickets on the website. It is so easy. It is so affordable. It is easy to get to. We may not be meeting out at the fairgrounds, but we are going to have great music all weekend long, both weekends. And it also goes for a good cause. It goes to the funk fund. You know what that means. That means that a Not lot of people. Absolutely. And they're gig workers and as well. Gig workers. Absolutely. So, Stu, 
I have been waiting for you to get back to tell people to do this. <laughs> I'm I'm not tired of telling people, <laughs> I but I, I I need some help it's with it's this. It's my right? classic catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> tell em, the tell them who we have tonight. So tonight we have actually four of my not only favorite musicians, but four of my favorite people out there. Absolutely. Some of the most <laughs> wonderful, kind, humble, genuine, and hardworking musicians you could ever hope to see, and they sure are soulful. The great Luther Dickinson on guitar, <laughs> Mississippi's finest. Ooh, We've got. New Orleans slash Atlanta, Georgia's finest, Mr. Jake Eckert over here on the <laughs> other guitar. And now, uh, one of the best, funkiest drummers out there, Swamp Grease himself, Mr. Terrence Higgins <laughs> over there on the drum kit. And of course, the legendary Kirk Joseph on the sousaphone. They don't get no better, y'all. So uh -huh. looks like they're tuned up, looks like they're ready to go. How y'all feeling over there? You ready hitting for us? It's easy capizzi, baby. Yeah, you're right. Well, in the meantime, y'all know what to do. It feels so good to get to say this again. Don't forget to wash your hands and stomp your, your feet. feet.
It's a sliver by the river, baby. Yes. <laughs> All right, so good to be with you cats. I love playing with y'all so much. Yeah. All right, we'll keep it going with some Mississippi John Hurt. Further pushing the Mississippi, Louisiana connection. soft and low, make it so the old man will never know, I'm going up the country with a cold sleet and snow, I'm going up the country with a cold sleet and snow, I'm going up in the country with a cold sleet and snow, ain't no telling how far I may go. Thank <laughs> you. 
Back and shoulder tight. I say the way I'm sleeping, my back and shoulder tight. I say the way I'm sleeping, my back and shoulder tight. I go to turn over and try it on the side. Let's turn it around on the three, make me down, and pat it down, soft and low, but make it so yeah, man, I'll never know. Man, I hope y'all are wiggling in, wiggling in your chairs as hard as I'm wiggling in mine. That's too much fun. It's so good to be back. <laughs> Kirk Jones said, yo, we're wiggling in your socks. Wiggling in the bathtub. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> no, but you right side clouds look at potholes too. <laughs> Probably can read a whole new step. <laughs> <laughs> Second line through the potholes. This one goes out to my, my soulmate, Miss Sade Thomas.
by my side You see me, allow me to pass on by
Amen. All right, all right. Give it up for the band. What a great way to kick off another fantastic night of music here at the Funky Uncle Lounge. My name is Soul Stu. It's an honor to be back sitting here with my co-host Leslie Cooper with our great audio-visual crew and, of course, with these fantastic musicians. And what I love about each one of these players is that uh, not only do they keep this rich history of American music alive, but they do that while blazing a trail into the future and uh, just really brings it all back home. Such an honor to be there. Be here with them and I uh, have you out there tuned in from wherever you may be, wiggling in your seat, in your socks, wherever. Uh, we sure hope you're enjoying it as much as we are. Of course, I've got my good friend Frenchy who is going to be immortalizing this wonderful night on canvas. He's got already got some outlines going over there. It's looking great. We still have a couple Frenchies that you can have right in the comfort of your own home. We've still got one from the Soul Brass Band. It's always a lot of fun. And we've got one from Sam Price and the True Believers. So you head on over over to the funky uncle dot live scope those out we also have some other great things for you and uh mainly we hope you're enjoying the music just as much as we are how are you feeling over there leslie Whew, this one's a good one. Oh yes i mean all 80 of the last week all 80 have been of them have been good great, good ones so would even we especially. were talking the other day about how you know, okay, what are we going to do in, in December? You know, who are we booking yeah. in December? And I was like, I don't know. We've had 80 bands already. Do we yeah. have that many in New Orleans? <laughs> Why, yes, we do. Where else could you do that? Why, yes, we <laughs> yeah. do. And the reason we do is through support from you, our listener. From you, those of you at home, you've gone to your phones and you've texted FUNK to 36413. You've gone to the website. You've clicked on that donate button, you've bought prints, you've bought merchandise, go to the Funky Shop, because Funky Shop, we've got all kind of stuff over here, I'll show you more of it later, but socks and shirts and hats and mugs and, and, and prints of every Frenchie painting that we've had so far, but most importantly this week, guess what we've got? We've got tickets to our Jazz Fest show. Oh, yeah. yeah. We start on Friday with Leo Nocentelli. Then, um, let's see, let's, let's tell him some of the people playing with him. Oh, Can he's got Big here? Chief yeah. Donald Harrison. He's got Big Sam, Jamal Baptiste, Stephen Perilou, Bill the Buddha Dickens, Elise Testoni, and of course... <laughs> And uh, you John, got Steve yeah, you said Steve. Uh, yep, John That's Papa Steve. Grow on that gig as well, God. huh? Jamal Batiste, that one's yeah. gonna be a good one. That's gonna be a That's lot one of fun. Of the, you know how when you go to Jazz Fest and and you're supposed to be at work next week. I'm sorry, you're supposed to be at nurse, uh, you know, work the next day, and you come out of a concert and you go, well, maybe in a few minutes we'll go to work because this one's gonna last for a while. <laughs> good thing the next day is Saturday, but that is Jason Neville. You can buy tickets to this. It's very, very, very affordable. And the best thing about it is it goes to support our musicians and gig workers. Now, come on, it is too easy. This is gonna be at the Voodoo 2 Lounge. It's in the CBD. It's easy to get to, 3.30 Carondelet. And uh, the good folks over at Voodoo 2 Lounge are happy to host us, and we are so happy to be there. I might Please. even let you buy, buy me a drink. Just the kind of guy I am. It's just the, I knew you were like that. I was hoping that you leave. Heart. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. You've been gone to, where were you? Colorado. Colorado, yeah, yeah. California. You well, know. you do that it's every like summer. That. I do, I and, do. Uh, you know. We were lucky to have you for I'm most of the summer yeah. last year. So yeah, I'm so a glad. rambling man, And Leslie. you went and you played. I and did play sang. a little music. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah, I want to hear yeah. all about that in a little oh, bit. Oh, a great time. Another one of our musicians and a gig worker and gig that, that yeah. you are supporting. So I am ready for us to... Um, to do some more music, are you? I sure am. Looks like the uh, the band's just about ready to go. He's got his Thanks strap so. all adjusted, his pedal board rocking. All got right, shoulders <laughs> going. Let's get yeah, <laughs> shoulders going, wiggling in the chair. Let's get back to it. In the meantime, y'all know what to do: wash your hands and stomp your feet. Sugar Town, up on Sugar Hill. I'm gonna shake the sugar down. 
Come on, sugar mama, we'll shake it, baby. Shake it, baby. All right. Uh, yeah. Shake it, baby. Shake it, baby. All night. I went to the sugar tree. I shook it with all my might. Yeah, what's the matter, honey? You ain't shaking right. Shake it, baby. Shake it, baby. All right. Shake it, baby. Shake it, baby. All night. And on down to Sugar Town.
You made me jump up out of my seat, Jake. You know what I need is one of those good old-fashioned orange ground lifts to shock the hell out of you, but that's what I need. I'm going to go. I'm going.
if there was a time limit to these shenanigans. <laughs> Good. That's, that's the way I like to roll. I do that in between songs. It's just like the end of the show when you're playing borrowed backline equipment. There's a wiped edit evidence. Zero, 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 zero. They'll never know. The abuse. <laughs> Shaking your ass Take your time 
at the Funky Uncle, and uh, we're so happy to have it. Once again, my name is Soul Stu. So good to be back in this host chair, back with my Funky Uncle family, back with this hardworking crew that makes it look and sound so good. Of course, I got my brother Frenchie over here with a beautiful painting on the way. Um, since the last time oh. we checked in, he's done so much to this canvas. It's coming to life. We can't wait to show it to you. And, of course, it could be yours. Yeah. Spruce Look up the at house that. Look at that. That is amazing. <laughs> it looks, it looks I hear Mojo Mojo when I see it right yeah, now. Yeah, absolutely. Right? It's got me, <laughs> get you wiggling in your seat. <laughs> in your socks and in, in the bathtub. <laughs> Wherever you find yourself. Stu, I sure am glad that you are back. Thanks I tell you what. Thanks for holding it down while having I was uh, you. This wandering. Is your spot. <laughs> well, not <laughs> all those who wander wander. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Not but all. We're all lost down here, so, oh, I, so it all works out. But you know? know what? When you hear the music, you find your way. That's that's you what leads me home way. every time. And I hope that you can find your way to your phone or your computer, where I want you to text Funk to three six four one three. Text FUNK to 36413. I want you to do something. If you do that for me, you're going to see where there is a one-time donation or a recurring donation. And if you click on that recurring donation for as little as a dollar a month, 
you become a member of our funky family. But if you can see your way fit to, to donate $13.13 or more, but at least thirteen thirteen, you're going to become a funky cousin. Now, that was a little bomb that uh, that you dropped on us right before you <laughs> yeah. left. Said, I'm going to miss my funky cousin. Funky cousins, and he y'all. takes off and misses us. Oh, but yeah. he's back, and I want you to show him how you want to be a cousin by donating thirteen thirteen a month. We're going to give you a piece of free merchandise out of our funky shop. You're going to get a special code for a discount. Um, you're going to get an email. You'll know all of the things that we do because uh, here at the Funky Uncle, we don't just do Wednesdays. We yeah. do Jazz Fest or what would have been Jazz Fest. You know, yeah. we realize why we can't do it of right course. now. It's not the it's maybe the smartest wanna be thing. Safe. But wanna be safe. we're going to be safe. We're going to make it work. And But just because we're not out there at the fairgrounds with 120,000 other people, does it mean that you and some of your closest friends can't come out and enjoy some great music at the Voodoo 2 Lounge yeah. this weekend and next weekend? Uh, we talked about the first weekend, Leo Nocentelli and Jason Neville, but the second weekend, look at that. Walter Wolfman Washington, y'all, and the Roadmasters, Funky Uncle All-Stars, Mark Mullins and friends, yeah. and y'all tune into the Funky Uncle. You see what a great time we have here and what a great party we throw in your living room or wherever you're watching on the live streams but wait till you see how we do it in real life it's even <laughs> more fun come down come boogie with us come get on that dance floor rock out to some leo knows to tell you some walter wolfman washington all these fantastic musicians you can even buy me a drink just kind of guy i am <laughs> <laughs> when we said support musicians and gig workers i'm not sure that that's what we were talking oh, about was it but you, you know what? Still do it though. <laughs> because you're just that kind of guy. I'll oblige. <laughs> I'll let you buy me a drink, you buy and I'll buy you a drink. All right, How about fair enough. Cheers. All right. Cheers. cheers. The ticket sales for this goes to support our funk fund, which has supported uh, six hundred and thirty-five musicians and gig workers so far. Yes. That's right. For every band that's out of work, sound guys, stage hands, lighting guys, camera operators, directors, bartenders. Store guys, bar backs, if you are a culture bearer, an Indian, a musician, any of that, and you need some assistance, Funky Family is here for you. Go to thefunkyuncle.live, click on that donate button, buy those tickets, because 100% in of that $526,000, yeah. $712.69, 100%, <laughs> I know, you had to say that, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what, I donated that part. You donated that? Yeah, I yeah, thought yeah. I'd see. Because that's just, just, just the kind of guy you are. <laughs> yeah, that's what I am. Oh, my goodness. I sure am glad that you're back. <laughs> because I need, I, you to, I need you to say something else. Go ahead. <laughs> of course. Looks like we're going to let these guys get the you get it all tuned up and get their uh, set where they want it. And before we get back to the music, i got to give a big shout-out to our good friends over at Fallberg Private Wealth for helping us make this happen, as well as they've made so many of the funky uncles happen and uh, have done so much for us. Wouldn't be here without them. So grateful to them. Of course, our good friends over at the Crew of Tux, which – Hopefully, yeah. fingers crossed, we'll be rolling the funky uncle down the uh, down St. Charles. Mm -hmm. We'll just have to wait and see. But in the meantime, we're gonna keep the tunes coming your way with uh, you know the fantastic Luther Dickinson, Kurt Joseph, Jake Eckert, Terrence Higgins. It doesn't get any better than these guys. I'll tell you that right now. I mean, I have on. a birthday. Oh, I have a birthday to celebrate to Who? to give. The uh, King Quasimodo, King oh, Two Zero, is in the house. All oh, hell. Hell. he's in the house, hiding in the deep dark secrets <laughs> yeah. of uh, of our super it. secret location. Right. It is. Uh, we celebrated his birthday uh, a week or so ago, maybe the so ago. And uh, my goodness, wave at the good people there. Cover your face and wave at everybody. <laughs> Yay! Happy all birthday! Hell. All hell! All King hell! Quasi. The crew of moms has supported us. I hope they'll come out and, and see us at the Jazz Fest shows. The of crew course. to Voo, they should come out 
and see Walter Wolfman Washington. Absolutely. He was their king. Former king. Former royal. Or, or he's always royalty. Always, there, always right. royalty. Always royalty. That was a fun crew to visit, too. That was a that fun one. one. Yeah, <laughs> it was. We're, we're talking like, remember when? Yeah. Remember back when? <laughs> and it's going to come back because of folks like you. Exactly. Exactly. Well, looks like they're just about there. We're just getting that Stratocaster. He's ready to go. So we'll get back to it. Y'all know what to do. Wash your hands and stomp your feet. How about some R.O. Burnside? That's what I... <laughs> Jake and I were just talking. I was like, hey, man, is everything cool? Like, this is mighty quiet. We're playing. Nah, man, this is, this is just my speed, baby.
Easy Capizzi. That goes out to the whole Trash Pile crew out there. And to all my homies back home. Cody, I was singing about you right just then, man. See you soon. Damn, that was the first song of that set. That was all, that's what I'm talking about.
messed around and broke his string and had to change him. He's still stretching out on me. We're stretching out. Stretching out, but we're not getting thin yet. What's, what the fuck? Man, I had like one of those hotel rooms with too many mirrors in it. I was like, what the fuck is that? Too much information. I asked my friend about that. She was like, that's bat fat, honey. <laughs> I said, we got fat back in Memphis, but I didn't know about back fat. I'm just talking shit. I still got two more songs if, 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 y'all, if y'all are right. All right, all right, here we go. More than two. All right, come on. In this set. <laughs> hey, y'all nervous? Y'all got a nervous problem. That we had to come in. I had to come in and change the string or something. No, 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 no. I'm talking about. I'm talking about a rehearsal. No, I changed the string of rehearsal. Get Chris, we're cleaning your ears out tomorrow night. This just <laughs> proves the, my fact, the theory. You think it's wise to talk while you're tuning your guitar, but it's not no. wise. No. No. Can we do two more of this set or one more? Two more in this set. All right, here we go.
to get with a no good bunch and clown. From Freud to late to get with a no good bunch and clown. Now she won't do nothing till a good man reputation. Now tell me about Mr. Jake. Shit, I get tangled up in a wireless. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, this next one goes out to my man, Jimi Hendrix, and the show we're playing tomorrow night. Y'all come down.
Jimi Hendrix tribute. I love these jazz fest traditions, especially in October. Man. You all messed up. I'm sorry.
Kirk Jones oh. and the Terry Tiggins are in the building when it just starts shaking. I Whoa, know. <laughs> on stage. I love it. I want to get the uh, Richter scale out yeah, and see exactly. what that one what that one. Hopefully, we get to an earthquake in New Orleans. Hopefully. Well, hopefully. Hey, 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 hey. Yep, yep. Forget I said it. Hey. It sounded great. Let's just say that. Yeah. Already, we've got you know. Yeah, we've been through enough. We've got murder hornets. We've got toilet paper crisis. We've got you know. COVID, we've got Hurricane <laughs> Ida, See, summertime in New Orleans. That's that's one of its that's own. That's always fun. I think that's enough. All right, yeah. let's let's yeah. not add the earthquake onto that, right, right. unless it's a funky earthquake, yeah. right? You know what? Funkquake, funkquake. Y'all been through that? some hard times, <laughs> and I feel for y'all so much. But I just want you to know, I got your back, New Orleans. Yeah, yes, right. you I do. love y'all so much. You always have too, Thank bro. You. you always have. You've always been an honorary New Orleanian, man. Coming down, jamming with all of our musicians. Yeah. Played so many great shows down here numerous times a year. You've never forgotten about us, and it uh, means a lot to us down here in the Sliver by the River, brother. Thanks for I being here. <laughs> Absolutely. And if you want to have that kind of support for the New Orleans music community, you don't have to come and play a guitar with everybody. You just have to text FUNK to 36413 or go to the website and click on Donate Now and give us just a little bit, or give us a lot. If you have been lucky and you're a little bit fat because of all those cover charges that you've been saving, uh, you know, you hadn't been out drinking in the bars, you hadn't been paying those cover charges, you hadn't been paying for the Ubers or ride share, excuse me, um, you got that money. So why not drop it in our tip bucket? It's so easy. Text FUNK to 36413. There's other ways that you can do it, and I hear that we've already got a bid on this Frenchie painting. Well, they're in luck because it is beautiful. I've been sitting here watching okay. Frenchie work on it this uh, this whole time, and the way he captured these musicians is just fantastic. You can just see their expressions. It looks just like him. He's got the sound coming out of the instruments and everything. Um, another wonderful, wonderful painting by our dear friend Frenchie, who's done so much to keep the funky uncle up going. We are so grateful to all of his hard work, all of his <laughs> generosity. He nailed you, Kurt. It looks just like you, bro. Kurt, and, uh, looks yeah, just we're like just so honored to have him here, and this one it can be yours, and it sounds like it's it's going to be a hot commodity. So. It could be. We've you already know? got a bid this on it. <laughs> you know what? If you're not lucky enough to win this bid, you can buy a print of it, just like go. our prints here. Uh, we've got uh, Soul Brass Band. We've got Sam Price. Those are still available. But if there's another one that you wanted and you really can't do the whole Frenchie thing, we've got prints of all sizes. All sizes of this, and Beautiful. and I'm telling Turn you what, canvas. and there will be more because we've got a jazz fest show coming up. Yeah, we do. We do. We do. Couple Starting shows. this weekend, Leo Nocentelli and then Jason Neville. The next weekend, the 14th, is the Funky Uncle All Stars. You do not know who's going to show up for that one because if you've ever been to the Funky Uncle, that makes you an all star. It does. <laughs> and then Walter Wolfman Washington on the 15th. And oh, and then Mark Mullins and Friends on the 16th. And we are so happy to be bringing the music to you. I've always been saying we're going to bring the music to you until you can come to us. Well, guess what? This oh, weekend too. and next weekend, you get to come to mm -hmm. us. And your ticket prices will go straight to the musicians and the gig workers. You will be a part of making history 
of helping keep the New Orleans music community alive. Don't forget it. <laughs> you all see how much fun we have here in these live streams. Come and see it in real life. Come boogie down with us here in New Orleans and uh, get that real full-on uh, 3D Funky Uncle experience, <laughs> you know? You, you know, won't be disappointed. There is another button on that website, the one that says oh, become yeah. a sponsor. That's right. Faubourg Private Wealth, I think they taped that button down because they have been doing this for, what, 30 weeks now? Done so is it much almost, for uh, Is so it 30 for. weeks? Thank you Faubourg. so much. Tyson. Tyson, Tyson is is amazing when it comes to finding sponsors, aren't you, my darling? And uh, you got he's that amazing nat. At many he, he's an amazing yeah, especially at that many one too. Things. But he's really good at finding our sponsors, and and they have been here. Foberg Private Wealth, give them a call. Check them out on their website. They have been supporting the New Orleans music community for this long. They've got to be doing something right. Let them do something right for you. All right, guys, we still got we still got some more tunes, don't we? Yeah, one more. We still got more tunes. No, we got we got like. I thought we were going to talk some shit. <laughs> we got. I I've got three more on my set list. <laughs> They're going to do two. We're going to come back. I'm going to beg him for one, and then guess what? And then time we're, for the interview, right? We're going to learn all kind of deep dark. Well, these guys secrets. are all just wealths of knowledge and history and and living. So can't wait for that. That last set was fantastic. It was. It, it was. We're <laughs> going to talk know? about the songs that, that he awesome. wrote yeah. and, uh, and some what of the, the songs that they're choosing to cover as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Because you know, some, of, these uh, tunes some of those need to be covered. Absolutely. And that's <laughs> another thing I, I love about these players, especially Luther's repertoire. He's keeping all these great hill country blues tunes and just traditional songs alive, breathing new life into them, bringing different musicians in here. And uh, it's always such a pleasure to uh, see it and hear it with my eyes and ears. So very grateful for that. And, uh, you know, they, it just doesn't get much better than these guys for me, I'm telling you. This I'm has been you. my savior during the last 80 weeks. Absolutely. Absolutely. So are we ready, guys? Like you know good. what you need All to do? All right. Wash your hands. Stomp your feet.
I just want to say how much I love these guys. Grew up a Mississippi hippie tripping LSD. This one goes out to, it's one we wrote, I wrote this song thinking about Buddy Guy, and Buddy Guy, and all he's lived through, makes me think about Mavis Staples, my queen of this fair country, makes me think about Bob Dylan, but that's an untold story, we won't talk about that, but uh, everybody, the, the, the musicians in their 80s right now are blowing my mind, you know, and it's such an inspiration. Blind Boys of Alabama, some of those cats are in their 90s. And Phil Lesh is in his 80s. We, we got Phil and the Blind Boys together, and I said, Phil, these guys are older than you. And he was like, it's not possible. <laughs> I said, no, 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 you're estimating your 90s. You're old, older than you, Mr. Lesh. But uh, anyway, these heroes, man, these freedom fighters, these rock and roll American heroes, man, just warm my heart, and I hope that we all get to get to keep it up, keep up our end of the deal like they have. Look back at the crossroads seen in our grandfather's times. A lot of changes come and gone. But I'll wait any more wise Made me want to hollow It makes me want to moan mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Pray for peace It's a prayer for peace mm -hmm. It's a prayer for peace. Oh Lord, I hate to think our grandmothers would be broken hearted. To see their children, children, right back where you stop. Make me want to hollow. It makes me want to moan.
Yes, the music is a prayer for peace, good peoples. Of course, Terrence has uh, played it as well with uh, his tribute to Little Feet. So uh, I think y'all are going to do it more justice than about anyone else <laughs> out there we could ask for. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if y'all bless us with that one, it sure will be a treat. And I'd like to thank everyone who's been tuning in to this fantastic performance tonight. Got one more. We're going to go out in style, y'all. And, you know, you know what to do out there. Go wash those hands. You're going to stomp those feet. <laughs> All right, take it away.
funky uncle. Yeah, please give it up out there in the digital world for Luther Dickinson on the guitar and vocals. Yeah. Yeah. Jake Eckert on the guitar and vocals. Yes, yes, yes. Terrence Higgins on the drums and cymbals. All right, and the all legend right. himself, New Orleans' own Kirk Joseph on the sousaphone. What the a fantastic <laughs> performance this evening. Now, you'd hear him. You'd think these guys are in a band touring the world together. No, they just got together today, went over some songs, got up, and just put it down <laughs> like they've been doing it like this together forever. So that just shows you the, the level of talent and professionalism that we're dealing here. And straight up soul, <laughs> may I add. Uh, they're as soulful as they come. So, so honored to have these musicians stick around because Leslie and I are going to have a chat with them. In the meantime, if you missed some of this performance, maybe you were out running to make a drink or something or went outside when one of your favorite songs is playing, it's all good. Go to our website, www.thefunkyuncle.live. We have all of our shows right there. You can relive this whole thing, invite some friends over, watch it again. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Instagram. Tell all your friends, invite them to join the party. Join the Funky Uncle family, become a funky cousin, do all that good stuff. And, of course, next week we've got Buku Groove, another great band. And in the meantime, we've got a beautiful Frenchie right here that can be yours. But let me tell you, there's some bids in it already, so it's going to be a hot commodity. It looks fantastic. It will uh, bring back all the magic of this night. And, uh, of course, we've got a couple Frenchies left. We've got the Soul Brass Band painting and the Sam Price painting, so those can be yours. Check it out. Big thanks to Frenchie for coming out here and making another wonderful painting. What a night, Leslie. Oh, we absolutely. we got more fun times coming, too. We do, we do. Our we have got fashion. Jazz Fest shows, all right? And just because... A certain foundation uh, is not able to do Jazz Fest next right. week or this weekend and next weekend. Doesn't mean the Funky Uncle can't. That's right. Yeah. Funky Uncle right there, 3.30 Carondelet, starting Friday night with Leo Nocentelli. Then Jason Ooh. Neville on Saturday night. Funky <laughs> Uncle All-Stars the next weekend on Thursday night. Then we've got Walter Wolfman Washington on Friday and Mark Mullins and Friends. Hi, <laughs> Gabe. Hi, <I> Gage. <laughs> then, we've got, uh, then we've got all these great shows coming up for you. Your ticket price goes to do so much. Oh, my gosh, so much. It helps our musicians. It helps our gig workers. And it Damn, makes Prince. their world a little bit better. Ooh. For 80 weeks, we have been battling the COVID out, you know, outcome. We've been battling the uh, now Hurricane Ida. It just seems that we just keep getting hit one after another. You can make their lives better. Text FUNK to 36413. Click on our website, thefunkyuncle.live. Click here to donate. Click here to bid on a Frenchie painting. Click here to visit our Funky Shop with all of our merchandise. But more importantly, click here to go to our Jazz Fest shows. We've been bringing the music to you until you can come to us. Now it's time for you to come to us. Make their world a better place is what Mr. Allen says. He's right there on the side of the funky <laughs> uncle float. Right there. Allen said that. I want to thank our sponsors one more time. We can never thank them enough. Yeah, put your hands together Bo over Berg. there. Boberg Private Wealth. They have been here for weeks and weeks and weeks. And we are so happy that they have been here right by our side, along with a lot of other sponsors in 80 Weeks. A lot. A lot. And uh, we want to thank those folks as well. So, wow, let's talk about some of these songs that we, uh, that we heard tonight. Let's, uh, let's do that. Look at you. You're, uh, you know, in, in the, in the pre-COVID world, you would have had a stagehand wrapping that cable oh, up no, for no, you. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, if you want it done <laughs> right, you're going to do it, right? Stuff. I turned over a new leaf a while back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I like, I like packing up my stuff. This is the sexy part of rock and roll right here. <laughs> this is the sexy part. Yeah, I have to say. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good cable that's, wrap there, that's Luther. A good, that's a tight. That's a little tight. It might be a little tight. Who does the over and under? You know, the over and the under. Reach around. Yeah, the reach, the reach around. Ooh, <laughs> there's a new song for you. All right, Actually, the reach around. I don't know. Can we retract that? <laughs> yeah, th yeah, that might that one. I might think not we go get into well. trouble for that one. So Jake, why don't? <laughs> so Jake, let's pull your microphone down where you can sit down and be comfortable and talk to us too. 
We got Kirk Joseph. Terrence we got Terrence Hello, Higgins Leslie. over there. All right. You guys comfortable for a few more minutes? All right. Yeah, sure. So, Luther, I have to ask, um, when you're dealing with New Orleans, so much of New Orleans music is tradition and finding a way to work through our traditions but still move forward has to be difficult. But I believe in the tune Yonder. Uh, yeah, Up Over Yonder. Up Over Yonder. Yes. Up Over Yonder. I'm going to mess them all up. No. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> you seem to do that in that song. Tell us a little bit about um, about what inspired you to write that one and how it worked that way. That song was inspired by my grandmother, my father's mother, who was a piano player, as was my father. What'd you call her? <laughs> her name was Martha, but I nicknamed her Eh. Eh? Yeah. Eh. eh. She spelled it A-Y-E, but it was I was an infant, and it stuck. So Eh. Eh. And yeah. they said we talk funny. She huh? was a great mm -hmm. piano player, and she taught me you know, my first little inklings of like reading sheet music. And you know, as a, as a young person, you're trying to read and she would, we would go, she played in church and uh, we would go to church on Sundays and I'd hear her play. And you know, we had the Broadman hymnal and we would like turn to, you know, stanza, we're gonna do stanza one, two and five and seven, you know, like, and uh, you know, I was trying to learn to read and trying to understand the music too and watching the little harmonies go up and down, rising and falling and thinking about what she had taught me. And, um, and w she passed away and I wrote that song that day that she passed away. Wow. And, you know, and it just happens to be perfect, like type of like little uh, hymnal harmony type of situation, you know? Sweet, so, sweet by you know, that. you talk about traditions and stuff to me, I think, you know, we owe it to our elders to carry on the repertoire, you know? Amen. Right? Amen. The repertoire, Amen. that's what. what New Orleans Seriously. Is all about yeah. too, and then we owe, it, we owe it to the future, the future right. generations, too, to know. That's important, man. Yeah. Seriously. I think it's very important for them to look where we've been so they'll know which direction to go. Yeah, well, that, too, you know, it's just in the music industry, I mean, me personally, it's so quick to push stuff aside and try to go on to something that's new. And, you know, that's, <laughs> there's so much that still could be utilized. Is what I, I guess that's what I'm trying to say, you know, uh, which, you know, which helps us to be more broad-minded to things, you know, that the music brings to our soul and to our understandings of those people who wrote those or played those instrumental songs, you know, because, me first means like um, when I was a kid, there were a lot more instrumental songs mm -hmm. that were played, and we got to understand it just from, from the feeling of whatever it was just a title or whatever. But the older I've gotten and the, the generations behind me, it's like if it didn't have lyrics, it's like I don't understand it. <laughs> and I, I'm not saying all, but I kind of sense that, and that's. Get on board, guys, because there's so much in instrumental, you know, songs that's been uh, recorded and and that can be, you know. Uh, so one of the tunes that you did, um, I found myself calling it haunting, almost, mojo, mojo. Um, where did that feeling come from? Tell us about that song. Man, Terrence and I were talking about where that fuel came from right before we played it. Six eight. Yeah, six eight, like three over two. You know, that's my favorite mm -hmm. place to dwell. You know, and even if it's a straight beat, it's fun to try and swing on top of it, or vice and ver vice versa. You know, and I don't know. I don't. Yeah, Cody taught it to me when I was really young, and it's just always stuck with me. But what the song's about for me is. You know, growing up in rural Mississippi, all my friends and cronies that didn't end up in the arts or music or whatever, they ended up in the military at one time or another. Yeah, just, yeah, just everybody. I mean, it's, it's a way out. You know, it's just part of growing up. You end up in the military, man. And my friends have been through some hellish experiences, and I wrote that song for them, you know, watching them come back and talk True. about it or not talk about it or try to recover or not recuperate. or It's, it's just... 
the things, the hellish things that they've done. And I just feel such a gratitude for them. And, you know, they don't have any choice of whether they believe in what they're doing or they think it's right or wrong. They just have to do what they have to do. But all I know is that I've been playing my guitar and doing what I wanted to do my whole life, and nobody has ever tried to stop me. And w what is that but the American dream? And I appreciate anybody and everybody that has done what they had to do to help perpetuate that for us who live, you know, as freedom rockers. Yeah. Speaking of free, in the third set, <laughs> in the freedom third rockers. set, your song, um, Oh, need to be free. Thank you. Thank what you. A, that was a segue. Uh, I, I need a brain. I need a, how, how's that for a segue, right? <laughs> I find my brain out there. Pick it up. Bring it to me. Wash it off. Bring it to me. Uh, need to be free. Don't we all? Don't we all? But what, what, what brought you to, to the space in your head that you wrote that song? Well, at the time I wrote that, that was, that's a pretty old song now. You know, it's not that recent. And there was just a lot of legislation going down in Mississippi that I could not get behind at all. In the original verse of that, I called the governor of Mississippi a low-down, dirty crook. <laughs> 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 Sounds pretty accurate. That was it nice. Was. He I signed this bill nice. about you gun laws and carrying your guns into church. And he had a, a picture in the paper of him with his pistol on top of the Bible. You're, yeah. And if you grew up knowing about that, you're not supposed to put anything on top of the Bible, much less your <laughs> pistol. Yes and nope. Asshole. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so I, I don't sing that verse anymore. I wrote more verses about it. Protest songs are really tricky, man. And, like, I love writing protest songs. But what put me in the headspace of trying to, like, sing a stance like, let it be known of what I feel, just lead by example, or not preach, but just, is my kids. I didn't want my kids to ever come to me and be like, yo, in 2001, this was going on. How, how come you never spoke up? You know, I'd never want that to be said. So I'm not going to argue with anybody. I'm not going to talk politics with anybody. That's not my bag. But every night we're in a microphone. We, we got microphones in a room full of people not paying attention, so... Fuck, might as well tell them where I think it's at. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, we, al we always, uh, my <laughs> grandmother always taught me, don't do anything that you can't look at, look in the mirror and answer that question. Ooh, grandma. Ooh, I know. <laughs> she was <laughs> wicked, and you didn't put anything on top of her Bible either. <laughs> all right? Exactly. There was a doily under it, but there was nothing on top of it, all right? But, um, and, uh, <laughs> so I can see that, you know, and and I feel that we shouldn't look at anything that we can't explain to our children, be it our children or the children we're around today, in in and not be able to feel good about what we did. I'm and still um, going to delete my Google search. <laughs> <laughs> when you figure out how to do that, let me know. Okay. So one more one more song see I want to ask you about browser, was. Uh, baby. <laughs> So <laughs> you got me on that. <laughs> All right, I'm done. No, no, no. Uh, up and rolling. Oh, that's about growing up in Mississippi. And yeah, it's just a vibe. It's a, kind of that Junior Kimbrough country barnyard psychedelia kind of vibe. And I don't know, that song kind of came to me as a vision, just singing that. It's funny. It's funny. I don't know. I worked real hard on it. It's a real simple one chord song, but... Um, it's just another one, just a song about growing up. About growing up. And growing up where? Up and rolling in North Mississippi. In? Well, we grew up in town? Hernando, and then we moved to Coldwater, just small towns south of Memphis. Maybe Perry I lived in Pelahatchie, Mississippi. It doesn't get much <laughs> smaller than that. The sign says, welcome to Pelahatchie on one side. Welcome, you know, y'all have a good time. Come back now. You're here on the other. That's how small it was, you know. But we, there was a lot of great musicians, and they taught us, you know, and they brought us on. And, like, if you showed up at a function, a party, a barbecue, whatever, you had to play. Like, you had to play. That was the thing. You couldn't show up and not play. And, you know, they would, they would ask you to play, and then they would sit there and berate you and make fun of you <laughs> as you tried to play. When you, you know. tried to play. Yeah, one big quote was like, they told me you could play. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you ain't playing shit. <laughs> like, you're on the bandstand. They're like, hey. They hey. told me you could play. <laughs> but anyway. I got called out on one of those once. It's a little scary, isn't it? But like you said about Jake, you know, that's the, 
you know, like when they pass that rep their repertoire on to you, then you got to carry it on, man. That's like a, that's a responsibility. Yeah. It is Circle a responsibility. Right so all of you guys have played the Funky Uncle before, and uh, I believe Stu wants to talk to you about, you know, things like, you know, what is uh, what does the Funky Uncle mean to you? What has it done? Jake, you've been awfully quiet over there. Why don't you start? Shh. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. The funky uncle, you know? I remember when Chris uh, first hit our manager up when we were with the suspects to play the funky uncle. You know, at the if you take it from the start of it, uh, we were in a pretty low place as far as being able to perform. Um, there was no live music for per se happening for a minute. You know, we were all there, we know. And um, I believe the Funky Uncle and Chris getting behind it and um, this whole team pulling together, it, it was breathing some life back into a situation that, you know, a little hope in a hopeless situation. Um, and it's amazing that uh, 80 shows or something ago, it's still happening. And um, I've been lucky enough to come play here a bunch of times now, and, and I, I can't really remember exactly all of them. And it's all been very meaningful. But what the, uh, the Funky Uncle is, is, is a sign of hope and a, and a sign of support and camaraderie and all the things that exist in the music business. The fact that Kirk and Luther and Terrence and myself are all here at the same time and are able to sit down and do this is because of camaraderie. And we could get how we, we, each of these people met over close to two decades, <laughs> you know, uh, which is, oh God. Uh, but, um, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, has it but been that long? <laughs> that, what's kept us going on, on the road pre-pandemic, it, 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 there's a, a sense of camaraderie. There's a family element. Even if you're not family or you're not from North Mississippi, you're not from New Orleans, you're not from Georgia, you're not from California, wherever it is, that brings us all together. And I believe the Funky Uncle represents that. You know, it, it does not, it, it breaks down the barriers that exist outside in that, in the world, you know, and that we're, we're in a, our own space here, in a, in a, in a place of hope, in a place of, of, of hope and faith, you know, and you feel that in the music and hopefully people can donate a, a buck or two or thousands yeah. or whatever you can do yeah. to keep sure. this going because it is something that in a time when there was not much light, it was a shining light. So, and, it, and each musician in New Orleans, one at a time, has made their way here. And you gotta give it to Chris and the gang for being persistent. Absolutely. You could easily have stopped that, because trust me, it was not easy. I don't know, I wasn't part of that, but I can tell you, it wasn't easy. There was probably resistance, there was probably a lot of barriers in the way. So, thanks, Funky Uncle, you know, let's say that, and also, for bringing people together who love to hang out and play music, you know. These are these are my oh, brothers here, man. Oh. Each yeah. each of these cats, in particular those two <laughs> guys, <laughs> we've been tens and hundreds of thousands of miles together. Around the world <laughs> together about and, 10 times. And, and Luther and I are, are friends, and, and, and I have a, a, a huge admiration and respect for what he does, and um, the fact that we're, you guys give us a vehicle to come here and do this together is really, um, you know, more than words can really express. You know, I hope the music speaks for itself. <laughs> so, I hope. Hmm. <laughs> you think? Yeah. Oh my goodness! I have heard some incredible music out of here. Out of out of. Uh, we started out as Fridays from the Funky Uncle, and then we've moved it to Wednesday nights because. We have had been able to crawl back out of our houses every now and then, and we have things going on on the weekends, and we hope that while you're sitting at home and finally catching up with your laundry and the kids' homework and that kind of thing, you're sharing this with your family and with your friends and, and telling them all about the Funky Uncle because 635 people that we have helped. 
well. Six that no that you have helped that you the listener have helped. So, Terrence hiding back there behind those drums. Always How are you, my back. love? <laughs> you threw me when you came in. The hat was down a little bit, and I didn't. And I was like. Wait, who's our drummer? Who's our drummer? I didn't. I I almost didn't recognize you. Ain't you were needle. you were trying to sneak <laughs> in behind all of that. You've been here before, correct? Yeah, actually, I played here with Jake Eckert <laughs> in one of the configurations that he put together. I was. Uh, Which one was that one? I, I Do you remember? Even remember what it was? But everybody Do remembers remember? the Funky Uncle and how sticky yeah. and hot or yeah, freezing right. cold <laughs> it was. But it was, uh, it was a great, you know, it was a great time. And I think that uh, Funky Uncle provided a resource during the pandemic, you know, to get the music and culture of New Orleans out there, you know. They were kind of on the front lines, I call it, um, you know, during the entire pandemic. And, you know, hats off to them, especially for still keeping it going, you know, coming out of this thing. Excellent. What's it like to get together with the uh, Kirk and Jake, who you travel oh, the world man. with, and then you know, throw Uther in the mix? Well, you know, like Jake said, you know, music brings us together. But New Orleans brought up, New Orleans music and culture brought us together initially from the right. beginning, from the first time we met. I met Kirk Joseph through the Dirty Dozen Brass Band. I met Luther Dickinson from Bi Dirty Dozen Brass yeah. Band, and I right. met Jake Eckert through the Dirty Dozen Brass Band, who's the pioneers of New Orleans music culture so um, New Orleans music brought us together and that's why we're, oh, yeah. we have this camaraderie we're all brothers you know uh, of New Orleans culture so it's like no matter where we live like Jake said earlier we still come together through that channel and that's a powerful thing you know oh, yeah. New Orleans legacy in music is so powerful <laughs> absolutely and now you know Terrence and Jake and Kirk being all New Orleans players when y'all have all traveled the world together performed a million times mm -hmm. When you when you go to other countries, other s towns, whatever, do you feel like that that New Orleans vibe? That's what people kind of zoom in on y'all when they when they see you walk in and just kind of. Yeah, I mean, they, they already know what to expect, and then we yeah. we carry that spirit of New Orleans with us. Within is when it's within us. So right. we don't just bring the music; we bring the spirit and the taste of the culture. We right. give these people the experience that they need through the music and through us. You know, it's all channeled. Through us, being from New Orleans is a very, very special thing. And like the New Orleans musicians, that you can't, let me tell you something, it's, it's such a powerful thing. And I, I think I, re I embraced it early on in my career, but right. you know, I realized at some point it, the bell went off in my head when I got, I started playing with George Porter, and yeah. then I got the call to do the Dirty Dozen thing. And you know, I, as a young age, I started playing with a lot of the older musicians who was still around, like Earl King and Snooks Eaglin and Fats Domino. Yeah. So as a young drummer coming up in New Orleans, I kind of got a taste of the, the real deal. From, from the, the greatest to ever do it. <laughs> from the source, you know. So yeah. I think it's a rare thing that musicians my age um, have that exposed, that were, were exposed to that in my generation. And that's like, we're, that, we're those dudes now. For real. So that information For was real. transferred through the source, through us, the next generation, and I think we're passing it on. Because I even see, you know, my footprint in New Orleans music, which is Absolutely, not huge, bro. but uh -oh. I, oh, hell yeah, it's I huge. can <laughs> see my footprint oh, yes. through all the young drummers For that are sure. coming up in New Orleans right now, directly and indirectly. Because mm -hmm. my time with Dirty Dozen, I think that gig in particular um, catapulted my playing into a different space. Yeah. And that was the true lineage of New Orleans music and drumming that I was able to uh, open up a little bit more. And I hear yeah. these little kids playing these gigs coming up under me, and I'm hearing all the inflections that I was doing through, you yeah, know, my sure. time with Dirty Dozen. And some of those guys actually played that gig, so they had to yeah. emulate what I was doing because we kind of reshaped it a little you bit. You also took, like, the, uh, the brass band. Normally, you got just a bass and the snare. Right, but right. You switched it up with the whole the whole kit. Yeah, I mean, I came in and had my interpretation of right. that lineage. And I had to play in that context, but I had so much other facility and musicality, it just took it to a whole nother level. And I swear, I hear it. I'm like, I'm hearing these kids oh, yes. playing, and I'm like, wow. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, you're not, you're not they cognizant took their notes, of it. You're not cognizant of it. Uh, you're not conscious of it. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, it's like, wait a minute. That's 
It's kind of my thing. Well, well you, you did write a book. Watch me at the Maple Leaf. Exactly. You, you, you know? did write a book. I mean. I, well, well, actually. Yeah, you did yeah, write a book kinda, about But, the like, movement. even yeah. other than that, I think just people um, becoming aware of what I've done, who I am in, <laughs> inside of New Orleans drumming, they look, a lot of those younger drummers look up to me, like Alvin Ford and Jamal Watson and, you know, a lot of those guys are taking off. They got, you know, they'll call me and they'll be like, Onk. Everybody's an uncle. Once right. you reach uncle status, that's it. Wait, You're the are you guy. a funky uncle? Uh, yeah, pretty much. You are a funky <laughs> uncle. I'm an official funky uncle, you know. So once they start calling you uncle, then they call you for advice, and they call you for how do I deal with this situation, and, you know. And sometimes if I'm not even talking drums with them, I can give them conceptual things yeah. musically that will help them, the you know. Side. So a lot of times people call me for a lesson, and they could already play, but I'm like, well, that's great. But check this out. Conceptually, you're not really approaching yeah. the music or the environment like you, you know, open, open enough. So once you approach it like that, then you, you know, you can kind of stretch out and play with great musicians like these dudes. Like we didn't right. rehearse, and some of the stuff I kind of knew the vibe. But then, you know, it's like you inject what you know and the language that we're speaking. So I'm able to interpret what he's saying and then transform and formulate my own response to that, whether it's what was recorded or not. Like, <laughs> so, sometimes in New Orleans, musicians are like, oh, you're not playing it like the record. But if you hear some of the older musicians who recorded the songs, they don't, they don't play even that. play it like that. <laughs> so it's like, that was a moment in time. This is a Thursday. And that was an interpretation, <laughs> right. So that's my approach. As long as I'm in the realm of the music or the idiom, I'm good. I can be myself, too. <laughs> Hey, it always makes sense. Putting on a drum clinic in this thing. <laughs> Hold up, I'm sorry. We, we should, we should <laughs> we talk about the dozen a lot. You know, we, this is a conduit. You know, one thing that this is a conduit we were talking about. We all come together for. Without, I met Luther the first time with Dirty Dozen. Kirk put me in Dirty Dozen. Met Terrence through Dirty Dozen. That's a <laughs> conduit that a lot of, you know, Kirk started that in his backyard. <laughs> and the amount of people that have come through that conduit. Right. Um, oh my God! If you put everybody on stage together, there's a schooling that these cats in gave me in particular that is a super, super, super deep well. And and, 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 and I gotta say yeah. one thing: we gotta wish somebody a happy 80th birthday. And it's the dude that keeps keeps the. <laughs> Yeah. Wheel turning. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's our man, you know, Mr. Roger, Roger Lewis. Turned, Roger turned Lewis. Eight, he turned 80 years old. Yes, he was did. it yesterday, Kurt? Tuesday, yep. Yesterday, yeah. Yesterday, yeah. Yesterday. Yes, on my radio show. And Happy it was birthday, Roger. It Dirty was, old uh, man. You know, <laughs> I remember when he was in his sick early 60s, and I was like, man, he's way up there, you know, and now I'm like, and he's still kicking, so I got to <laughs> okay. give a shout Big out, shout out to Roger. there because that conduit, we wouldn't, we, all of us wouldn't be sitting here right now without. For better or for worse, without oh that conduit. Yeah. Uh, Kirk, do you remember the first time you, you heard Terrence play and heard Jake play? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. What was that yes. like? Huh? What was that like? Well, it was interesting. I mean, it's like Terrence was saying, <clears throat> like, you know, being one of the fundamentals of the Dirty Dozen, yeah. we always had a vision of having a, a kit drum, a, a set player. Yeah. You know? I really we wanted somebody to actually play snare drum or bass drum and also play kit because we wanted to widen our perspective I mean, of playing. And so when I first saw Terrence playing with him, I'm like, okay, he's, he's on it. He's doing what he has to do. Yeah. So that was cool. It was interesting. Uh, Jake. Jake was my California angel for doing Katrina. Right. Yeah, I went out to California when Anders Osborne, and I got stuck out there. Couldn't I've come home. You guys played the Boom Boom Room yeah. after Katrina. Yeah, yeah uh, but I actually, week. what happened... We played every Wednesday, didn't we? Yeah, but what happened was, when we did the Boom Boom Room, when I, I did the Boom Boom Room with Anders, which was Anders, Eric Boulevard, Tim Green. And so That's we found out Green. that, yeah, that Saturday, we found out we couldn't come home, so we turned our show to a hurricane party. And so, uh, but then it went on from there, but... So then I hooked up with Eric Lindell. Nice. Eric Lindell say, come with me. I'm like, dude, <laughs> you already have a bass player. He say, come with me. I'm like, okay. I had nothing else to do. Because I was, I mean, I was lost. I, I, you know, Susan phone player. 
Um, it was really kind of, I mean, as a drummer, you could play anywhere. Right. As a guitar player, you could play anywhere. Yeah. As a regular horn player, you could play anywhere. But as a sousaphone player. They barely know what that is, though. Out yeah, yeah, up. well, you know. Bando. Yeah, but we, we changed that. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what yeah. I was going to say. Yeah, so, but it, it, it happened, and, and good thing I did release a CD the year before. Mm-hmm. Because right. it helped me yeah. to, Back you know, yeah, room. to kind of send it out to people. But it made, it made like Terrence was saying about how, it woke up, how he woke up and realized how important he was to the music. And it made me realize, I'm like, damn, okay. I think what I set out to do is now being acknowledged because I was able to still work. Yeah. You know, I was able to be, because my whole thing was to bring the sousaphone, when I first started playing, was to bring the sousaphone to the stage. Right. Not one to not do parades, but just I wanted to enlighten people that this instrument could be used not only in the street, but up there as well. So that's what happened. So when I went with Eric to, I followed him down to LA, and that's when I met Jake. Nice. And Jake said, hey man, you know, the club owner, what his name was again? St- uh, Steve? Steve, yeah. Yeah, Steve introduced. And, and it wasn't just, there was a whole bunch of people who knew of each other and knew each other and got put in this, and that's where Honey Island Swamp Band started. started they they yeah. were Eric's backup man. Remember, there's a right. we played the boom. Yeah, it was boom. Aaron and, and Chris in San Francisco yeah, in every week, right. and then we right. had a gig in LA every right. week. Right, right. He was going up and down the coast and every they week. And started as a jam session, right? The Pretty Island. much, yeah. And then Eric Lindell was mixed in. Eddie Christmas yeah. was out there. Um, yeah. It, there was a, they, it, it, people were like <laughs> all over the place. Yeah. It was. It was a. It was. Yeah, but I, I kind of felt where I had out there. I was. It wasn't other than who the names he mentioned. We were the only ones kind of doing that everywhere else it's like everybody was in phoenix chicago wherever else but where we were i felt we were the only ones doing it you know yeah Yeah. and i think a good thing was due to our you know some of our elders like zigaboo was out there Mm -hmm. so i'm like if you know zigaboo you gotta know what we do (laughs) so i'm saying yeah and then you had but then you had leo down in in la so if you know leo you gotta know what we do right so it was a help you know what i'm saying so just you know, having that lineage, lineage of New Orleans musicians that had moved out there, it was good because we got in touch with each other and helped each other out, you know. But that's how I met Jake, and that's the first time it was great, you know. But Jake, he's a great guitar player. And he really, like I said, I call him to, still to the day my California angel because he took the time out of his busy schedule and wrote all my horn charts out. And Aww. Also introduced me because he had a band called Soul Underground, which was a great band um, with great players. What was know. the name? Soul Underground. New, New Soul. Soul Underground. New Soul. Yeah, yeah. I thought oh. it was okay. New Soul. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm it was sorry. underground. Yeah. Well, I'm <laughs> saying underground. It was New Soul. It was Larry Carlton. Larry, Larry Carlton. It's his son Travis Carlton. Then you had Luke on keyboards. Yeah. You had Paulie Sarah on uh, tenor saxophone. Uh, you had uh, uh, Lee Thurber from Tile Power on trumpet. And actually, uh, I also yeah. recorded on oh, one of the CDs as well. Yeah. yeah. But that's how Jake and I hooked up. Uh, now, here we are all these years later. Yeah, that's, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the funny thing is that they knew about me true. He knew about me true to dozen. Right. Yeah. I don't know if you ever saw me play at that time, because by that time, I was already out the band yeah. since yeah. the early 90s, you know. Right. Yeah. So, Kirk but, wasn't in the Dirty Dozen when I just first joined yeah. the band. Yeah, yeah. Terrence was. Okay. And then you came back, what, four, five? Yeah, I caught your well, I remember you telling me when he came back, we were at the Leaf, and you're like, yo, Kirk's back with a dozen. And it was, you were so yeah. excited. And <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's too. when I caught Terrence in. It sounded great. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, did, right. hold on. Was Jamie? Jamie, yeah. Jamie had already left. But, you know, I had did a couple of gigs in between that. That's what happened. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. But that, what I'm thinking about. <laughs> I had Microphone, actually, Jake. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> on camera. Right. Anyway, well, that's, that's our, our crew's getting our a bartender tired says that, uh, yeah. that, that you don't up. have to go home, but you can't stay yeah, here. We gotta get I need one here. more thing from each and every one of you. Oh wait, Luther, where's your mic? Ah, in your oh, hand. He, does he, does that. he doesn't that like Bob Barker. I need each and every one of you to tell our listeners what we tell everyone to do each and every week. Which is to what, Jay? Wash your hands and stomp, stomp your, your feet. feet. Luther? All right. Wash your hands and stomp your feet. 
Kurt. Wash your hands and stomp your feet. And Terrence. Wash your hands and stomp, stomp your feet. feet. And Stu, <laughs> Stu, wait, Stu, where'd Stu, you go? Stu, get out of here. Yeah, you I got to wash have you hands. to do it. Just because I got there to do it. Stu, go wash your hands. I want hands. you to text Funk. They want me to hear me again? Text Funk to 36413. It is never too late to donate. Get in this number. Get in this number that's going to to help support our New Orleans music community because it means a lot to us, and I know it means a lot to you. Stu, what are they going to do till we come back next week? Wash your hands, stomp your feet. Thank Slow you. Good night, darling. Good night, darling. <laughs>